Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video I am really excited about. I've wanted to make this for over a year now and I just kept putting it off and we're finally here now. So as you saw in the title, we're gonna be talking about all things menstrual cups. I have over like a year of using menstrual cups now exclusively. I haven't used tampons or pads or anything. It's been a full year of periods with just a menstrual cup and I've had such a good experience with it and I'm honestly glad I waited to make this video to have a long time of experience instead of just trying it for like a month or two and telling you guys like this has become my thing and I feel like it's changed my life and if you haven't tried it, if you've been scared to try it, I really want you to give it a try. I'm totally in the same boat with you. I waited like, I think the first time I ever heard of menstrual cups, I worked at Shoppers Drug Mart in Canada and I remember seeing the Diva cup uh, down like our period aisle and I was like, that seems weird as hell. Like I thought it was gross at first, but like over time, like through like hearing other people using it, I was always like, I really wanna try it, but I was scared and I waited like three years, like literally periods just kept going by and I was like, should I buy it this month? No, I don't want to, I'm scared, it's expensive. And I can't believe how much time I wasted, how much money I could have saved, how much easier this has made my period. Like I literally don't mind getting my period at all. And yes, I know I'm just flinging this around. This is a menstrual cup. I have two of them. I'm wearing one of them. Uh, I bought these menstrual cups off of Amazon back in April of last year. So again, it's been over a year now. I'll pull the one up on the screen that I bought. Um, I'm literally cheap as hell. I basically tried to just find the cheapest menstrual cups that I could with the best reviews so it had a lot of good reviews it was cheap it was pink and purple so I was sold it also came with these cute little bags that you can put them in just for storage discreetness you could put this in your purse or your bag backpack whatever you have or I just keep them in my drawer in my bathroom while I'm not using them just so that they're in a cute little pouch and I love it so you get two little pouches with that one there are so many brands that you can get um, diva cups up. Um, I think Lily Cup is one and there are also some brands that come with like different sizes like there's like kind of like a small size and then there's a bigger size for if you've had like a child or something or if like your cervix is bigger so that part will kind of come with research depending on what you want to do the ones that I got were just standard size they work for me so that was pretty easy but um, that's just kind of one little learning curve thing to note you might need to try a couple before you get the right one so just kind of keep an open mind with that. So let's dive into what actually is a menstrual cup in case you don't know. Um, so obviously this is what a menstrual cup is. It's like a rubber cup that you use instead of other period products like tampons or pads and you literally put it into your vagina and it um, collects the blood but instead of putting in a tampon that will absorb the blood this literally just catches it in a cup and you're probably thinking how the hell would that work wouldn't it leak I don't understand and basically it's like a suction cup kind of thing so when it's sitting in your vagina properly it like can't leak past the seal and it literally all just goes into the cup and it works really really well. I also have my notes here and I just kind of want to list off like a couple kind of pros about using this. Um, one, it holds more blood than tampons and pads. You might be thinking like what like that's such a tiny little cup but I think it's like periods are kind of really misleading like you think that a lot more blood is coming out than there actually is and this does pretty good. You can wear this for up to 12 hours which is also a lot longer than tampons or pads. The only reason why you wouldn't wear it up to 12 hours is if you had a really heavy flow it can fill up quicker so maybe you'll change it every four to six hours but either way you're changing your tampons or pads anyways so it is what it is. Overall, for most people, you can wear this for up to 12 hours with no issues. I do that, no issues. I'm also gonna put this down because I'm realizing I'm just swinging it around. I'm having a really good time and I don't wanna be doing that the whole video. They're also super eco-friendly in terms of no waste. Like think about all of the tampons that you're throwing out. Like I, I imagine you're probably throwing out like 20 tampons at least per period for all of your life, like that's so much garbage. And this is literally, I've had this and the other one, like the two that I've had for already over a year. You don't need to replace them that often. They say that you can replace them anywhere from like six months to 10 years, literally just depending on how well 
you take care of them. I personally will probably replace this like next year, so like every two years, just because I feel like it would be nice to get a fresh one. But the fact that this could last for 10 years and it cost me $20 for two of them, like that's so cheap. Like within one or two months of periods, you've already spent more on tampons or pads. Like I am good for life now pretty much and I just maybe have to spend $20 every couple of years. So super eco-friendly uh, for the environment, for your wallet, you're going to save so much money. So there's way less of a risk for a toxic shock syndrome which you can get with tampons so you don't got to stress about that or with tampons you're always worried about leaving them in too long. It's like oh my god am I going to die with this. It's way less of a risk to no risk at all. I read online it just said less of a risk. I don't really know if you could get toxic shock syndrome, tongue twister, uh, from this, but basically no risk at all. And another thing, as I was mentioning, there's a ton of different brands of menstrual cups. There's different colors that you can get, different sizes, shapes, so you don't have to settle on any one brand. You can find one that works for you, just like how people have preferences on their pad and tampon brands. So that's just a couple of quick little facts about it. And also I just went and did kind of some quick math to see roughly how much you would save. So I started my period when I was 15 years old approximately and let's just say it was approximately like $7 a month per period. That's about $84 a year times 12 years because I'm now 27 so that's already like $1,008 so over $1,000 on tampons. And again that's just a rough estimization and then for my lifetime if I started my period at 15 and if I have it till I'm 55 so 40 years that would be $3,360 versus with a menstrual cup, say if you replace it every two years, you're only going to spend about $400 in your lifetime and that's only if you're actually replacing them every two years. Technically this could last you five years, ten years. You might only spend under $100 in your lifetime with this and not have all that tampon and pad waste. Freaking amazing. Okay, so now I want to kind of get into a little bit about my experience with them, how I've loved them, just kind of how it's been for me, how it was when I first started trying them versus now, and just kind of give a whole little spiel. So the main reason I finally decided to try them, other than just in general wanting to, the push that made me do it was that I had just got a job at Walmart. I was going to be starting in May, and I bought these, I think it was like April 18th, so I kind of had them so I was prepared and ready, but my shifts at Walmart were going to be like nine hours long and I didn't want to deal with having to change tampons and stuff all day so I decided to go with the menstrual cup and basically what's really nice about that is guys I have experienced working full-time for a few months I didn't work there for that long but I was walking around so much all day in these menstrual cups and they didn't fail me once like literally I would go my whole shift did not have to change it once, did not feel it for walking, uh, bending down to grab stuff off the shelf, going up ladders and all kinds of stuff. Literally, I didn't even know that it was there. And I used to work uh, at Shoppers Drug Mart. That was my other job that I worked for like almost nine or 10 years. And at that time I used tampons and it was always really, really annoying. I remember so many times during my shift, I'd be stuck standing on cash and I would feel my tampon leaking and be like, oh my God, I need to change this. And my break wasn't for a little bit or I'd have to get someone to come and cover for me and it was just like a whole thing and I didn't really trust them and it just wasn't fun and this never ever let me down and I would say Walmart was a lot more like movement and stuff um, so it's a really great option for if you have like long shifts that would work for you one thing that I will say maybe that wouldn't be the best thing if you had a super heavy flow like if you know for a fact you would have to change this sooner than 9, 10, 11, or 12 hours, then maybe that would be bad because then that would be a situation where you're in a public bathroom. So luckily for me, I haven't been in a situation yet where I've had to change it in public. Um, I've just always been able to wait till I get home because I can wear it for long enough to do that. But I have looked up some stuff and I even kind of have some ideas of how I would deal with that if I was ever in that situation, but I'm going to talk about that at more of the end of the video. The only point that I'm trying to get at is if I can work nine hour shifts at Walmart, moving around, all kinds of stuff, they're really, really good. Never had an issue at all. I've also tested running, uh, jumping, 
anything like jumping jacks, exercise, all kinds of stuff. I've never once had it leak. The only time that I did have it leak was within the first like two periods that I was using it. So when I was still super, super brand new and that was only because I didn't put it in right. Um, it was sitting down too low so it wasn't like in the right spot. So there was kind of like a gap for it to leak. So pretty much the only way that you could ever have a leak is one, you put it in wrong. Usually that it's sitting too low. Two, that you didn't seal it correctly. Again, I'm gonna be going over this later, but when you put it in, you have to, like once it pops open, you have to kind of like rotate it around to make sure that it actually opened up all the way and that there wasn't like a spot where it's still kind of like bent. So basically the whole point is that only incorrect insertion is gonna cause leaks. And then the other one would be if you're wearing the wrong size. So say for example, if you're just wearing the standard size or the small size, but maybe you've had a kid before or maybe you just have like a larger cervix or just stuff going on down there. And if you're wearing one that's too small, you'll probably have issues. But again, that all just comes down to finding the right one. And another thing that I've really, really loved about them is that you can wear them while you're peeing or going number two or anything. There's no like string in the way. It's not gonna get wet or anything. It literally doesn't matter. It just sits there. It's fine. Um, so you don't have to change it every time that you go pee. And also you can wear them to bed. I think that I've read that you're not supposed to wear tampons to bed and you're supposed to wear pads. I personally, I don't know if it's bad, it probably really, really was, but I always wore my tampons to bed because I hated pads. They were the most uncomfortable thing ever. So I always just wore them to bed. Maybe one day I'll die from toxic shock syndrome, but hopefully not because that era is now behind me. And now I can just sleep with peace of mind. In terms of changing them, I usually have a routine of changing them just in the morning when I wake up and then when I go to bed. So that's literally it. Just two times in the day. It's not that bad. I'll be honest, it's like a little bit annoying like taking out a tampon or taking off a pad is a lot easier and quicker but at the same time you have to do it more frequently I feel like it's more gross like personally I feel like holding like a bloody tampon is a lot grosser than dealing with this just wake up in the morning go pee take it out wash my hands clean it all that stuff put it back in I'm good for the whole day until bedtime so that's my whole routine morning night that's it i'm good for the day it's honestly not that bad for being messy i feel like a lot of people are like oh my god it's gonna be so messy but literally you just take it out you dump the blood into the toilet the worst that it's gonna be is that maybe when you were pulling it out you got some blood on your fingers or maybe when you were dumping it maybe a little bit spilled onto your hand it's no big deal you're gonna wash your hands i'm gonna do a whole section of the video at the end where i kind of like demonstrate i mean not actually but i'll kind of take you guys into the bathroom with me and kind of show you the process of what i do how i wash it and all that stuff at the end i think honestly the biggest thing if you're wanting to try it but you're kind of hesitant is it's honestly just a mindset thing just really tell yourself like hey this is gonna be new it's gonna be weird it might take me a while to figure it out it might take one to five whole period cycles for you to get used to it but when you think about the long term of how much money you're going to save of how much more comfortable it is it's totally worth it like if you're willing to put up with you know maybe having to spend anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour the first maybe couple times that you do this to figure it out figure out what works for you for putting it in what positions you need to go into and there's nothing wrong with it taking time to figure out everyone's going to have their own ways and methods for example you could stand to take it out or to put it in you can be sitting squatting you could lay down on a towel you could go in the shower there's so many different things kind of everything for just my personal journey and experience with them so far overall big love would never ever go back so worth the learning curve and the struggle to get to a point where I'm just comfortable using them it's no big deal you can just do it so next I have a list of pros and cons I probably kind of talked about all these in the video but at least this way you can kind of see a visual list I'll probably like put them up on the screen as I edit it so let's start with the pros there's no waste it's cheaper, you can wear it for up to 12 hours, less risk of toxic shock syndrome, holds more blood, good for exercise and movement, uh, comfortable, you can't feel it if it's inserted correctly. Pretty much everyone can use it whether you have a light or a heavy flow. You can wear it to bed, it comes in different sizes and shapes, it can reduce cramps, and there's no leaks, again, as long as you put it in correctly. And then for the cons, there is a learning curve, there can be a bigger upfront cost in terms of it can be like 20 to $30 depending on the brand that you're getting. You have to clean it 
in between uses versus tampons you just get to throw them out and put a new one in. It can be uncomfy or have leaks while you're still learning if you haven't figured out how to put them in yet. You might have some leaks. So I also just want to note you might want to while you're first trying them still have some tampons on hand in case it's really not working out for you. Just switch back to tampons, try again another day, and also maybe wear like a light pad or like panty liner just in case you have any leaks. Another con is if you have certain medical conditions, you might not be able to use them. Maybe having to empty them in a public bathroom, definitely another con. We're gonna be going over that in my next section about questions. There is a potential for mess. And also it can be difficult to know when you need to empty it or when it's full because there's not really like a way to know until it's actually overflowing and you can kind of feel like it's full. So that's all of the pros and cons that I was able to think of. And now I wanna answer a couple of questions. One of the first questions I got is how do you deal with odors because obviously it seems like the blood is just like there just like sitting in a cup like that's obviously gonna smell but actually because of the suction seal on the cup you can't smell it because it hasn't been exposed to air so it's actually there's no smell at all where I feel like pads or tampons would actually have more of a smell um, whereas this you wouldn't smell it until you're like changing it I guess if you were to like sniff it maybe like your cup of blood that might smell kind of weird. I have actually sniffed mine before. It doesn't smell that bad, to be honest. This question is public bathrooms. So this one, like I was saying, I so far have not had to deal with this. I was reading online what to do if this happens, and someone said to bring some damp paper towels into the bathroom stall with you. So then what you would do is you would take the cup out, empty the blood into the toilet, and then use the paper towel to kind of wipe the cup clean and then put it back in. The only thing that I found weird about that is now you're just gonna have damp bloody paper towels and I don't think you're supposed to flush paper towels so I don't really know maybe you could throw them out in the little tampon box like the feminine hygiene product disposal box thing uh, I don't know if that would be rude like hey here's my damp bloody paper towels but I mean that is an option I was kind of thinking like worst case like maybe you could have like a Ziploc bag that you could like put them into to throw out later. Maybe you could come out of the stall, have the little Ziploc bag of your gross paper towels and wait till the coast is clear and then throw it out or something like that. A scenario that I thought of that I would personally maybe do if I was in a super desperate situation um, is because since I have two cups, like I'm wearing the purple cup right now and then I have this one, if I had to change it in public, I would maybe again, maybe bring like a little Ziploc bag with me, take it out, empty the blood out and then put that kind of dirty cup into a little Ziploc bag. Um, maybe have some like wet wipes with you so you can just kind of clean up anything if it's like on your hands or something like that. And then I would have my extra, my second cup with me so I could put a clean cup in during the day and then just I would keep that gross little Ziploc baggie of my cup until I get home and I can clean it. I feel like if you were in a desperate situation that wouldn't be too horrible and then you can just wash your hands when you're done. I feel like it might seem kind of gross that you're just keeping a little Ziploc baggie of it but again if you were desperate that's what I would do. Or a very similar alternative to that if you don't have an extra like a second cup with you maybe bring tampons with you so that again you could take out the cup empty it put into a little Ziploc bag and put it away into your bag and then just use a tampon for the rest of that scenario until you can get home and go back to cleaning it and putting it back in or whatever. Um, so maybe it might be worth keeping some pads or tampons on you for like those oh shit moments. The next question I have is, is it uncomfortable? And honestly, no, not at all. Again, it all comes down to as long as you have it in correctly. I remember in my beginning days, there was some times where it was sitting down too low, so say if, um, I don't know if you can see this, but say if it needs to be up there to where it's like covered, if it's kind of sitting like that and there's like this spot that's kind of just like hanging down near the bottom, that doesn't feel very nice. Like there's a certain spot where it just kind of like sits in there. Like see how my hand is kind of like, creating like this perfect little like, I'm just holding the cup perfectly and it just sits in there. If it's below that point, it's like, that's kind of awkward. Like there's just this little bit hanging down. You'll see what I mean. If you have it in wrong, it's gonna feel weird. But when I have this in, I don't even know that it's in. Like I forget that it's in. The only reason that I know I'm on my period is just cause mentally I at some point remember like, oh yeah, I'm on my period. I have to change this before I go to bed. Um, I cannot feel it. There's nothing, no position, no sitting down, running, walking, standing, anything. Do I ever feel this when it's in? The next question is about spills. So I'm guessing this is kind of 
of like spills and overflows, like leakage. Um, I feel bad that I keep saying this, but again, as long as you have it in the right way, that shouldn't happen. Um, so let's start with spills, like maybe just in general, like, oops, I was clumsy. I had my cup of blood that I just took out. I was gonna dump it in the toilet and I like dropped it. I threw it onto the floor and now there's blood on the floor. That sucks, you gotta clean it up. So I would probably just use paper towel initially, paper towel or toilet paper if you're in a public bathroom, wipe it up, no big deal, wash the floor afterwards, wash your hands. If it's a public bathroom, I mean, just do the best that you can with some paper towel. But that might be awkward if there's people, but as far as if it was in your house and if you spilt it onto the toilet seat or onto the floor or onto your hand, it's really just as simple as you gotta clean up some blood now and then wash your hands, wash the floor, get your cleaner out and all that stuff, no big deal. And then as far as leaking, I mean, it's really no worse than a pad or a tampon leaking anyways. I'm sure that we've all been in situations where you've been out in public and you are leaking and it's getting on your underwear it might leak through to your pants hopefully you're not wearing white pants and it's just a really shitty situation I would imagine if that happened to me at work I would probably be like I have to go home I leaked through my stuff and now my pants are bloody like I gotta go home you just would deal with it as it comes but I feel like it's worth trying considering it could happen anyways with a tampon or a pad and the last question i had is what if you have a heavy flow will this work for you that would really just come down to you might need to change it more frequently for me i think my period is just kind of like standard it's pretty chill um i've never had like excessive amounts of blood like i said this always has lasted me the 12 hours what you might want to try say if it's your first week of having a period and trying this maybe just kind of check it after four Four hours of having it in pull it out see how it's doing and obviously dump it out if you pulled it out anyways you may as well dump it and clean it and put it back in but just kind of test it let it go for four hours if it seems okay next time let it go for six seven eight hours take it out kind of get a feel for it i imagine after a few times of having your period you'll figure out what's best for you do you have to change it morning and night like me or do you have to change it morning at noon and then at night again like how many times do you have to change in a day you'll just have to figure out what works for you and i imagine you probably have certain days like maybe the first two days of your period is super heavy and then it's not so bad so maybe only on the first two days you have to change it maybe three or four times in a day um, but then for the rest of your period maybe it's lighter now and you only need to change it morning and night so it'll really just be about just testing it seeing what works for you and if it ever does overflow just kind of take a mental note like okay don't go longer than eight hours because that equals bad things. I think that that is everything for the pros and cons and for the questions. I hope that I answered them okay. Um, I only know what I know in terms of my body, so the rest is just kind of guessing. But ultimate notes is please give it a try. It's worth a try. Literally the worst thing that can happen is that you bought it, you spent your 20 or 30 bucks, and you end up hating it. It sucks, but at least you tried it. At least you took the chance to save a bunch of money. I think that it's worth giving it a shot and you can always come back to it. You can always try it for one of your periods, maybe try it for a day or so and then say, no, I don't really like this. I'm going back to tampons or pads. And then if you want, you can forget about this for a few months and then maybe you'll be ready. You know what? I'm gonna give that a try again because I do have it. So take as much time as you need with it but I'm just gonna say I would never, ever, ever go back. This is my forever till I'm done having my periods. When I'm older, I will always use a menstrual cup and I wish that I knew about this sooner. If I could go back and tell younger me anything, I would be like, yo, get a menstrual cup because you're gonna save so much money and have a way better time and it's just so lovely. I think now I'm ready to take you guys with me into my bathroom and I'm gonna show you um, a couple folding methods and kind of positions that I stand in and things that I do. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be an interesting time. So let's go ahead to my bathroom and discuss that. Okay, so we are in the bathroom now and I wanna start with showing you guys some folding methods and kind of demonstrating using my hand. I don't even know what all of these methods are called. Maybe I'll put like a picture up if I find one that like shows and kind of represents how to fold them and what they all mean. The most popular one and the one that I use is just pinching it down and then folding it over and then you kind of have this little shape. So this helps to make it a smaller size, maybe a little bit bigger than a tampon. But that's what I do. The other one that I've seen people do is you push down and it kind of makes this like, I don't know, this one kind of reminds me of like a flower. 
sort of. Um, I personally don't like this one. It doesn't work for me. It tends to like pop open. You can experiment with different folding methods. Try them all, see which one tends to work for you. Once you have it folded, we're going to pretend that my hand is my vagina. And one thing that I really want to say, and one of the things that I think people have a lot of issues with, I've heard a lot of people say that like it pops out, like they can't even get it in like they have it folded they go to put it and then it's like opening before they can even get it in it's just popping out can't get it to go inside and the biggest thing when i was learning that i discovered is it is super hands-on like there's no cute way to put this in like you're not just going to be like oh it's in i have realized you really have to put your fingers in there kind of there's nothing wrong with it it's your body your vagina is very stretchy it doesn't hurt you can just you got to do what you got to do so say if this is your vagina you're going to take your folded cup you're going to put it in and you're literally going to bring your fingers up with it your fingers are going in with the cup until it's at the point where you know that it's in it's not going to pop out of your vagina and then you can let go and at that point it's going to open up and it should be in there. But this is the also super important step. Once it pops open, you're not done yet. You're gonna want to still go back in and use your finger. Sometimes I use my thumb and I kind of come at it from the front. Super hard to actually explain without showing you, but you have to kind of like rotate the cup around. Let me just kind of demonstrate this again from the beginning. Fold the cup, put it in, shove your fingers in there. Once it's in, let it pop open. And then you're going to want to use your fingers to kind of get in there and take the cup and spin it around. And this helps it to make sure that it's opened all the way, that there's not any little spots that are still folded in and that it's not suctioned shut. So just kind of just get your fingers in there, give it a rotate, maybe just kind of, you know, adjust some things, make sure it feels open and then you should be good. If it's sitting in the right spot, you won't feel it. Once you're standing there and your hands aren't in there anymore, you'll know, you can kind of move. Does it feel good? You should be able to tell. If it's not, I'll kind of put my hands back in there and be like, it's still, if it's still sitting too low, I put my hands back in and I just push it up a little bit further until it's feeling good and comfortable. And then afterwards, I'll usually sit down and like pee. Even if I already peed, I'll kind of just sit down and pretend to pee. I feel like just using your pee muscles helps you to check and to feel if it feels comfortable. Um, and then you're good to go. You're on your way. You're, it's very nice. And now let's talk about uh, removing the cup. So say it's been however long, eight hours, 12 hours, whatever it is. Usually what I'll do is I'll usually go pee because I find if I have any urge at all to pee and if I'm trying to pull it out while I still have that urge to pee, it doesn't work as well. Like I can't be fully relaxed until I've peed. I don't know if that's just me. So I go pee first so that I know that there's nothing going on down there. All that I'm focused on is the thought of taking this out. I basically will just reach my fingers in there and you have to go really far. You don't pull on the stem. This is not like a tampon string. You don't just pull on that. This thing is suction sealed into your vagina essentially. So if you pull on this, it's just going to get stuck. Like it's not going to budge. And if you do get it to, it's going to probably hurt a little bit because you just like broke a suction seal in your vagina. So you can use this as kind of a way, like when you're reaching your fingers in, like, okay, I feel the stem, so I know where it is. And you're gonna kind of want to grab up to like about midway-ish. You can, sometimes I've had it where like, sometimes it's just not working. I can't get a good grip on it. So if the best you can do is grab right there, that's pretty good. But I find it easier, the higher up that you can go to grab it, you just grab it and then that breaks the suction seal. So say if it's suction sealed like that, when you grab it, it kind of opens up a little gap and then grab it, grab it really strong. Like be like, I am not letting this thing go. I realized through doing this that I got sick of the amount of times, especially in the beginning that I lost my grip on it. Like I would try to pull it out. I'd be like, oh, oh I got it. And then I would lose it. And I'd be like, oh my God. So I'm like trying again and again. Now I'm like, no, you are my bitch. I am taking you out. So I, um, grab it super strong and when I have it I'm like this is coming out and I just pull it out and then at that point you're still sitting on the toilet so you can just empty it out into um, the toilet and then it's empty and then you just need to clean it and that's how you insert and remove it. It's all going to be your own little personal journey you'll discover for inserting it. Do you need to... Hi kitty! My kitty is here. But it's all going to be your own personal journey. You'll discover what you need to do 
Do you need to put a leg up to remove it and insert it? Do you need to be like squatted down to do it? Do you need to sit down on the toilet? Do you need to stand up straight? Do you reach around from behind? Do you reach around from the front? Try everything, literally. And I also wanna say that of course you can take this out in the shower. I find that is like the easiest, best way to do it because you're literally just standing in the shower. You can put a leg up, you can stand straight, you can squat down, you can sit down, you can lay down if you want and take it out and just, it all goes down the drain. You can take off the shower head and kind of rinse out the shower if there's any blood that kind of splattered everywhere. You can also bring your soap into the shower so you can just clean it right in the shower and then just put it right back in and use the handheld shower head to really wash everything. I feel like that makes me feel so clean, like to have this changed and then also down there all clean is so much better I think than just changing it just normal on the toilet kind of deal because it's just, it's so nice to just actually be clean down there. So. Yeah, so just know there's many different ways, positions, places that you can change it. So now I wanted to kind of demonstrate a scenario of me having to change my cup, um, just so you guys know the whole process of kind of how I do it. This bathroom is actually pretty good because the sink is right here. So I could, okay, so say I've, I just peed and I'm ready to take the cup out. I would essentially reach in while I'm sitting down and pull the cup out and then dump it right into the toilet because I'm already over the toilet. And then I would kind of pull the cup out. Obviously now I'm holding the cup. It's kind of bloody. This bathroom, like I was saying, is really great. The sink is right there within reaching range that I could put it over there. But in my other bathroom, in the master bathroom, the sink is far away from the toilet. So I'm kind of in this position where I'm like, I'm holding this bloody cup. Um, I still need to clean up down here and I have nowhere to put this. So what I found that I like to do is just grab like one piece of toilet paper, maybe two if you think it's going to leak, but really since you just emptied it into the toilet, it's not really that it's like spilling everywhere, but it's also too messy that I don't just want to like put it onto the ground because there'd probably be like a little bit of blood. So I just set it onto the ground, pretend that this is the ground, and I just set it there so that while I'm kind of finishing wiping and cleaning up, also I'd highly recommend baby wipes. It's super nice to clean it, especially if you don't want to get into the shower. So it just kind of helps to clean you up down there because you might have, sometimes there's like blood clots, like these like stringy, sticky blood things that will be like hanging down from your vagina into the toilet and you have to like wipe them up and it's gross. It's TMI, it's gross, but I'm here, I don't mind talking about it. This is what I found is a good solution to temporarily put your cup somewhere until you're done, until you finish, you can flush the toilet and then you can go to the sink to actually clean it. It's just a little temporary holding spot for it. Um, so next I've finished peeing, I've flushed the toilet, and then now would be the part where I would bring my cup over to the sink, um, rinse it out really good, and then wash it with an antibacterial soap and wash it super, super good. I like scrub it, I get the insides, I do everything, and I wash it with as hot of water as I can like tolerate. And then I wash my hands really good and then I put it back in. I also will usually dry it before I put it back in and just use like a paper towel or a clean towel. Just definitely don't use like, don't use like an old hand towel. Like if you have a hand towel that's been sitting out for like five days, don't use that to dry it. Just make sure it's like a relatively clean towel, not dirty. Um, dry it off or you could leave it wet, I guess, but I think that I just dry it off. But I mean, if you were in the shower, it would be wet so it doesn't really matter and sometimes it being wet can help you kind of as a lubricant. You can also put lubricant on this if you have a hard time. So yeah, but anyways, finish washing it, wash your hands, make sure it's clean and that your hands are clean, and then you're gonna put it back in. And also, I just wanna be real, while this is all happening, my pants are usually still down because like, it's not like you can pull your pants back up while you're cleaning it because you're still kind of gross down there. There might be blood, so you don't wanna get it on your underwear. So it's just kind of really funny, and this is what I was mentioning, where it's just kind of a whole thing to change, to take it out, to clean it, to put it back in. It's a whole event, it's like a Five to 10 minute event. Um, but anyways, when it comes to putting it in, um, what I like to do and what works for me, so again, I do my little folding method. So we have our, I think that this is a C fold. I don't remember. And reaching around from the back works a lot better than trying to like put it in from the front. I know this is really weird. Um, but also um, I just want to note, see how this part is like the 
rounded part, not the fold part, but this part. So I kind of go around and then I go into my vagina first with that part and then push it up from the back. And once it's pretty much in there and I have to do the thing where I adjust it and kind of give it a little spin to make sure it's suction sealed, I find that part's easier to kind of reach around from the front, but it's kind of a whole like front and back mission using both hands sometimes until you get it in. And then after that, of course, you're gonna wash your hands really well again. So as a recap, it's basically go pee, take it out, dump it out, put it down somewhere or put it in the sink if you can reach, finish peeing, come over to the sink, wash it, wash your hands, dry it if you want to, put it back in, wash your hands again, and now you're good to go. So make sure that you have five or 10 minutes to do that and you're pretty much good. Well, yeah, anyways, that was probably super TMI. I wanted to go as in-depth and as visual as I possibly could. I really, really hope that it helped you in any way. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below. I will help you as best I can. Nothing is really TMI for me, so it's whatever. Also, I just realized another thing that I almost missed is sanitizing these cups. So when you first get them, like when you first buy your first menstrual cups, you'll have to boil them. So when I got mine last year in April and it came with the two of them, I took them out of their packaging and put them into a little pot of water on the stove and brought it to a boil for like 10 minutes and that completely sterilizes them, sanitizes them so that they're good for your use. And I would recommend after every period or at least after every other, so every month or two, give these another boil just to keep them maintained and clean because even though you are cleaning them after every use, I would still say it's a good idea to fully give it a full on sanitize so that you know that it's good to go uh, for your next period. And then you can just store them in those little baggies until the next time. And then usually when it is next time, since they've been sitting there for a few weeks, I'll usually just give them a quick rinse with like really hot water, just so I know that they're fully good to go, even though they're already clean. But that is pretty much everything. I might put in some like B-roll footage of me boiling these just for a visual. Hopefully I remember to do that. Sometimes I suck with fully planning out this stuff, but I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Uh, again, I know that I already said this, but ask me any questions, even if you want to DM me on Instagram so that it can be more private or whatever, I will try to help you as best I can. I'm going to um, put this on as a little hat and say goodbye. I hope that you guys have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So I decided to add this part where I show you guys how I wash it. So this is the soap that I use. It's just dial clean and gentle antibacterial hand soap this is the best thing that I have found um, so what I do obviously usually this would be all kind of bloody it'll usually be pretty dirty kind of all on the inside um, again it's just gonna be a thing you will get a little bit of blood on your hands there's no avoiding it um, but also I want to mention there's these little tiny I don't know if you can see that but there's these little tiny air holes um, and I think that that's to help with like the suction and stuff or something. I don't know. It serves some kind of a purpose, but sometimes blood gets into these little holes. So while I'm cleaning it, I like to kind of stretch them. As you can see, when I like pull it apart, the holes kind of open. I don't really know if you guys can see that, but I like to stretch it while I'm washing it just in case there's any bits of blood in there. So I usually get the water as hot as I can. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm not too worried about it, but basically I will rinse it out. A bunch because while you're doing this there's probably like blood still coming out until it's relatively clean and then I'll kind of reach or and then I'll kind of pull the little holes apart and just kind of give it a good rinse then I will grab some soap and I like to kind of get it going and then I just start washing it and I really like to get the inside and I go like this and just really give it a good scrub. It's kind of fun, to be honest. Okay, and then rinse it off. Make sure you rinse it really good. And that is how you clean a menstrual cup. And then I just put this fresh towel out so I'm just going to use it to dry it and I usually I don't worry about the inside I just dry the outside and now it's ready to go back in and that's how you clean it.